great for us to join together once again for these encouraging words from the scripture and the hope that we can find as we look to the Lord and reach out to him in prayer. Here at Friendship Village, this has been a great week. Every year, we participate in something called the Angel Tree Ministry. An Angel Tree is a ministry of a group called Prison Fellowship who works to provide spiritual care for men and women who have ended up being incarcerated. And one of the side effects, or the consequences rather, of someone going to prison is how it impacts families and particularly children who had nothing to do with the choices that a mom or dad made that caused them to to be incarcerated and yet nevertheless they bear the brunt of it and around the holidays that can become a crushing reality and so angel tree comes alongside to um, work with these folks who are in prison so that we can provide a gift to their children on their behalf And here at Friendship Village, we do that. We raise all the money. We call the families. We make sure that it's appropriate to send a gift. And then we find out coat sizes and toys and all of that. And and we put those all together. And so this week in um, small groups, carefully socially distanced, we uh, joined together and wrapped all these gifts and presents. 34 different children, 14 different families, and providing them all with coats and hats and mittens and gloves, that kind of thing, and additional uh, toys and and things that they were hoping for and and wanted to receive this Christmas. In addition, every family got a $50 gift card to, um, uh, to pick up some groceries as well. And so just a tremendous gathering. In fact, um, my office is absolutely packed with the gifts and I can hardly walk through here and they're going to be picked up and delivered by a local church and uh, we're grateful for that partnership the way that we can help and then the church can deliver those and and even develop perhaps a long-term relationship with the family that extends beyond the Christmas season it's a wonderful way to come together you know, we all have heartaches and disappointments and tragedies in our lives, things that bring us pain, things that cause us shame. And there's nothing new about that. That's been true all through human history. In Luke chapter 1, in verse 25, Elizabeth, a cousin to Mary, had experienced shame all of her adult life. Her hope had been to bear a child. And in their culture, not having a child was a huge source of shame. In fact, folks would have wondered, what's wrong with you? There must be something that you've done. Maybe God is punishing you. And so there was a lot of social stigma and people kind of looking askance with one eye. And Elizabeth, with her husband Zechariah, had endured that, stayed faithful to God in the midst of that, despite all those shame, all, all of that shame. Zechariah was a priest. Of course, yesterday we talked about how the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and announced that uh, they would have a child after all. In Luke 1 and verse 25, we get Elizabeth's response to that as she gives birth to her son, John. Listen to what she says. She writes, or Luke writes on her behalf and says, The Lord has done this for me. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Isn't that a wonderful thought? That God is a remover of shame. Now, I don't think Elizabeth had anything to be ashamed about at all. I mean, life just uh, takes on different directions at different times for different folks. And yet, God cares about Elizabeth. He cares for every concern. And not only was it part of his plan, to send the forerunner of the Messiah, who we would later know as John the Baptist, um, to be raised by Elizabeth. But, uh, but he cares for her and brings her joy and brings her hope by meeting her at her point of need. Well, here's the truth for you and I. We all have moments of need. We all have times where we have carried shame, sometimes for illegitimate reasons, sometimes for legitimate reasons, as we have regrets or remorse. But here's the good news. God is gracious. 
He's a redeemer. He's kind. He's good. He's loving. He is slow to anger. He is quick to forgive sin and rebellion. And so no matter where we find ourselves, maybe we're in a place of regret because of our own choices. Maybe we're in a place of disappointment because of certain circumstances in life and how they've turned out or didn't turn out. But here's the point. God loves us and meets us right where we are. And we can count on him today to do the same. We, uh, we can trust him to minister his love, his kindness, and care. And for every heart that trusts in the Lord, in the end, no one goes away disappointed. He either brings us what we need, or he changes our conditions and changes the condition of our heart to change our desires. But either way, he makes his goodness known. He is trustworthy. He is the remover of shame. If you're struggling with any of that today, turn to him. There is hope to be found. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we reach out to you today, trusting in your goodness, your kindness, your incredible love for each one of us. And as we read the account and see Elizabeth's words and the joy that began to fill her heart as as her outward circumstance changed. Lord, I thank you that you also are determined to fill our hearts with a similar sense of satisfaction, peace, and joy as we trust you and follow your ways. Lord, we purpose to devote ourselves to you in all things to turn to you, to bring you our hopes and dreams, to bring you our heartaches, in disappointments, knowing, Lord, that you're the source of all mercy. Pour out grace today to each person in need. For, for all those who are listening in this moment who are carrying shame, we turn that over to you, asking for your cleansing and your redemption. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us where we are and loving us at all times and in all circumstances. We give you praise and honor today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Through Angel Tree, we get to be the means of showing God's love to children who perhaps are carrying their own pain, their own disappointment, their own shame. And uh, we want them to know that they are greatly loved and that their future doesn't depend on what's happened in the past. It only depends on encountering God now. That's a message all of us can open our hearts to and receive. Be encouraged today in the Lord. He is the remover of all shame. Here at Friendship Village, we're doing our best to show you these videos three times a day. They're brand new at 4.30. They're repeated 8 o'clock at night and again at 8 o'clock the following morning. You can always find them on YouTube. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burke Campbell and you'll find, you'll find all of our videos there right now. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.